started. And then, so we're going to go with um, Hilf Jahika. Okay, this is Tuesday, October 11th. Um, it is, this is the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I am Janice Tatarka. I am joined by Hector Velez, Joan, my God, I'm drawing a blank. Cromwell. Cromwell, I'm terrible tonight. John DePriest, Joe Mahoney, and <laughs> Hugo Perdomo. Boy, I'm not having a good day. Um, so the first case in front of us today is 2022-13-30, Hillside Ave, J. Duca. Mr. Duca. This is for you. You came to us before, John. What did the planning board have to say? The planning board, the planning board recommended denial of the special permit. Okay, and would you like to update us on any information and different from our hearing or that might clarify something that was con of concern to the planning board? Well, they, they recommended denial of a, of, of a plan that included the garage. Mr. Duke is going to present a, a different plan. A different so. plan. Okay, that's so, so you're presenting something that was meant to help address what was raised of concern by the planning board. Yes. Okay, please present that to us. No. Uh, can you hear that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for giving us the opportunity the last three months to uh, work with a neighbor who is here tonight who will speak. Um, we've had eight uh, renditions, this one being the final one. As a result of the planning board meeting, we decided the, uh, to take the garage completely off the building to open up uh, the sky for uh, Mr. Busios. Um, th that's basically the, the major change. I won't go through the whole plan unless you want me to. Uh, I will say that the floor plan on the first floor, the, the home is basically as big enough as it needs to be. The first floor is, uh, is two bedrooms, a bathroom, um, uh, and uh, uh, closets, and th there's enough room for that. And then upstairs, we crammed, kind of crammed in the kitchen, dining room, and um, living room. So th that's basically the building. Uh, the the mm -hmm. stories below are the part of the means of egress. It includes one bedroom and a, a game room at the, in the walkout patio. So everything else is the same except that we reduced, uh, we eliminated the garage altogether. So it, it opened up 15 feet of uh, view for the neighbor in the back. We also, the only other change is in the picture before you, it shows uh, we installed a, uh, included a 15, um, a six foot privacy fence. So um, I'll be glad to answer any questions. I'll go over the prerequisite uh, uh, if you'd like me to answer any other questions, I'll be happy to do that. Well, first, I'll ask if the, are there any questions of the board? Again, it's a public hearing, so I'm going to ask if there's anybody here who wishes to speak on this. So this will be your last opportunity. Sir, please introduce, please make sure you speak at the microphone and please give us your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. My name is Konstantinos Busios and I'm the abatic neighbor to, to the uh, 30 Hillside Avenue. So, um, as you know, the, the main reason for which I have been a little bit of concerned about this building is that because we are a little bit lower and that's at an elevation for us. So it's gonna be kind of overlooking. We have worked very closely with Mr. Duca. He has really uh, been very uh, considerate for us and has taken down, has made a lot of changes. Uh, I still don't know what it will look like for us. I still, you know, we're trying to visualize and picture it. Uh, but right now, I don't have anything to, uh, to, to oppose it. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not, we're not, I'm not planning to appeal it, uh, but that we're still, you know, processing it. Uh, and great thanks, that, that garage really opens up, uh, you know, the fact that the garage was taken out really opens up the sky for us. Otherwise, that would have been very, you know, like very close and um, relatively high. Uh, so, you know, right now, nothing, I've just, we're just trying to get used to it, to the idea, and uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? There being none, I'm going to close the public participation portion of this. Variance requirements. John, remind us again what the variances are for. Uh, those variances are aggregate width of side yards, uh, minimum lot size, minimum front yard setback, minimum side yard setback, minimum rear yard setback, minimum usable open space per family. 
And now with the redesign, uh, it'll be require a special permit because the parking is now in the front yard and therefore it needs a special permit relief for that. Okay. But we're gonna go through the variance requirements, as you know, so let's go through those one at a time. The variance is sought because of soil conditions, shape or topography of such land or structure, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. Are you, are you asking me? I am asking you, you yes. need to respond to each of those and see if we agree with you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the variance is sought because of the soil, uh, the shape of the, uh, the topography of the lot, uh, where it slopes downward, uh, the only place really the building would work is at the front of the building, uh, at the front lot line. Uh, we're we're uh, utilizing the existing footprint of the existing building. Um, also, the hardship is um, the structure itself. It's a garage not worth trying to um, repair and, or replace because it doesn't really, uh, it's not allowed in this neighborhood and um, it would be too cost prohibitive to fix that and end up having a, a, another garage in the neighborhood. Um, so, it, so that's number one? Yeah. It's based, that's, mm -hmm. that's one and two. Yeah. That's, 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 let's yeah. go one at a time. <laughs> yeah. Let's, so number one, do we agree based on the shape of this that this, that he, he's, he's properly answered the question. Has he responded? Yes? Arthur, you're not responding on this one, right, though? No, you're right, Bob. No. Oh. May, may I also add, it's also the shape of the lot only allows the building to be placed in that particular Right, place. that's what I gathered you said. I'm sorry. Okay. Joe? Um, with regards to the garage. It's not there anymore. Yes, I understand that, but that doesn't constitute a major change. No. No. Okay. You okay with number with yeah. that? Okay. Joan? Yeah. I'm okay. So you said the little enforcement would involve a substantial hardship. You just answered that as well. Do you say? Yes. You go? Joe? Yes. Yes. Number three, desir desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Yes, desir <clears throat> desirable relief may be granted uh, because the change of this building to a residential structure is something that belongs in the neighborhood. No one will be impacted by having another residential structure um, and desirable relief. The setbacks, we're not, we have not created any further setbacks or nonconformities with this building. It meets the height uh, requirements, uh, minimum, maximum requirements. Um, we, we've not extended uh, further into a setback. We, we it's not gonna hurt anybody. It's not gonna hurt anybody. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Joe? Yes. 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 Desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. Yes, we believe desirable relief may be granted without derogating from the intent and purpose of the Chelsea ordinance uh, because it is a residential structure that belongs in this neighborhood and it fits the character of the neighborhood. Okay. Okay, so you meet the variances. So, John, does the planning department have any comments? We have uh, three conditions that I propose. Uh, the standard conditions, uh, design review, and an exterior lighting plan to include dark sky compliant lighting. Are you okay with those requirements? I am, Madam Chair. Okay, so that being said, do I have a motion on this? Do I have a motion, Hugo? Can I make, I make a motion to approve case 2022 that's 1330 Hillside Avenue for the special permits variances to construct a single family home. Based and with, with their um, conditions Con articulated by John. Yes. Do we have a second, Joan? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, board members. Thank you. Do you want me to check and see? I'd like to thank Mr. Bruce too for working with us uh, the last thank few you. months. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next case in front of us is, oops, I'm out of my line, is 170 Cottage Street, uh, neighborhood developers for special permits and variances seeking approval for the construction of a new 66 unit apartment building, which does not meet the current minimum zoning requirements for lot area, off street parking spaces, rear yard setback, side yard setback, maximum floor area ratio, and maximum building height. Uh, I. I'm going to, I know there are people who might be wishing to comment on this and I'm gonna ask that people limit their initial comments to five minutes to give everybody an opportunity to speak. And after that five minutes, if there's additional information you wish to provide, then you can, you can use additional time. So, um, wait till we get John back because I wanna know what the, 
what we heard from the planning department, the planning board. John, could you tell us what the planning board's recommendation was on this case? The planning board recommended an approval of the special permits with the standard uh, conditions and design review. Okay, sit with the standard conditions and design mm -hmm. review. Do you want, so why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell us, you know, what additional information we need or should have based at, since our last discussion. Uh, great, I'm Steve LaFerrier. I'm the director of real estate at the neighborhood developers. And I'm Laura Chelamoet, associate at Davis Square Architects. Okay. Um, and we did a really quick presentation that hopefully we can just breeze through in five minutes. Um, John, do you want to go to the so next? So you haven't made any change. I mean, if you haven't made any change. The only thing that you guys asked for was an updated rendering of the Bellingham Street side. So I think that is slide uh, maybe seven and eight. Yeah, there's one before this, but this is the, the main one. So this is the uh, an updated re rendering of the Bellingham Street side. What, what are your thoughts about it looking kind of monolithic? Um, I think we've got three different materials. Um, and they, we talked a little bit about having um, sort of a concept of motion sort of throughout the site. And we think that that's our main strategy for um, breaking it up, we've kind of called this facade, uh, uh, wave facade, um, that again sort of connotes motion being close to the water, being close to the silver line and the, the greenway, which is obviously a bike path. Um, but well, yeah, again, if we approve this, we would ask for a design review, so we'd mention it. Okay. Right. Does anybody have any questions before I open it again to the public? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this? If you do, please, please come up and, and in front of the, say your name and address, and. Speak into the microphone, please. Thank you. Um, my name is Sandy Maynard, and um, I'm a resident and homeowner at 52 Chester Ave. Um, and I want to thank you all for your service on the zoning board. Um, zoning's important, and to grant a variance, um, you have to have a good reason for it. This project has 66 excellent reasons for it. Um, Twelve of them will be one-bedroom homes for affordable um, residents. 43 will be two bedroom homes and the exciting part is 11 of these units will be three bedroom homes for families. They'll all be affordable at 60% average mean income or thir some at 30% average mean up income for the most needy. And um, with just, um, you know, a foot, a foot of height and, <laughs> and a foot of setback, I think is well outweighed by the fact that we'll be providing our community with what's really, really needed, and that's affordable housing. And TND really listened to the community. One of the community's concerns with the zoning was um, green space and open space, and they've increased it by 80% in this project, and I fully support it for my neighborhood in Chelsea. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is there anyone wish else who wishes to speak on this? Um, in the back first, nope, back first. <laughs> Hands go up for him and it quicker. Um, good, good evening, zoning you board You can pull members. that down so it's easier for you. Good evening, zoning board members. My name is Amon Swabney. I'm, I'm sorry, could you speak up? I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Amon Swabney, and I am a resident at 53 Garish. Um, I am a sophomore at Chelsea High School. I am here supporting the 170 Cottage Street Project, and hope you can vote in favor as well. Thanks to the neighborhood developers, we have been living at 53 Garish Ave for 10 years, going on 11. My mom applied to live at this house. We currently live in and got lucky and chosen. At that time, we really needed housing and a roof over our heads desperately. And I want this project to help other people who are going through the same thing we, we were going through during that time. I hope you can vote in favor of, of this project. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my concerns, and I wish you a good night. Thank you, and thank you for coming. That's nice to get civically involved this early in your life. Next, your turn. Good evening, Maria Liz Jesus, 373 Crescent. Um, I ran from work, so I'm still wearing my t-shirt. I apologize for that. That's quite all right. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I wanted to make sure I came and in front of you shared you know, how much I support this project, as you heard from some of the previous testimonies. Um, 
how can you uh, have any objections to affordable housing and green space for our community? Um, <coughs> personally, I also think that the fact that it is TND that is developing this housing in our community, we have the ability to not worry about the long-term maintenance of this property. Many times we see affordable housing attached to poor maintained properties, and that is not the case. I am sure that this property will be well maintained and these folks who are able to live in, these, in this property will have decent homes and will be able to live in dignity. Um, and it's green space and affordable housing that is perfect for our community. If you live in Chelsea, if you know Chelsea, that is what our families are screaming for. So please support these changes. Thank you. Thank you. Wait till you get up there. <laughs> uh, 116 um, Clark Avenue. I am delighted to be here speaking on behalf of Did you of say your name for the record? Oh, Gladys Vega. Gladys Vega. Um, so I am delighted to be here supporting um, the project for TNB. Um, recently, we've been dealing with all these fires, so um, having all these families, accommodating families and not finding apartments, sometimes we find the income to support the families, and when we call and say that we want the apartments, the apartments are gone within hours. So we have very limited housing. This is affordable housing. This is new housing. Um, that we need in Chelsea, I would beg you to make any accommodations in terms of parking um, because we need affordable housing in the city of Chelsea. In addition to that, we don't have to deal with landlords um, because we know TND is extremely responsible. We don't have to fight landlords to maintain the apartments. And of course, open space. We have so little open space. Everything that is being developed in the city of Chelsea you know, it doesn't require open space. This is amazing. When I saw the pictures of this building, I was like, wow, amazing. That is that specific neighborhood, we're gonna have open space. So please support this project. It's affordable housing for our community, for the neighborhood. And once again, whenever TND does a project, they, did, they do it with class, they did do it with dignity for all the residents in Chelsea, as we are poor, but we need dignified um, housing. So muchisimas gracias, thank you. Thank you. Roseanne Mangiovanni with Green Roots and 7 Bell Street in Chelsea, uh, reiterating everything that Gladys and Ariely said earlier. This project is an amazing project on the Chelsea Greenway, and it's spectacular to connect affordable housing to um, public transportation. It's so close to the Silver Line and so close to the commuter rail station. What I love about this project is not only, as Gladys said, it's not only affordable housing, but it also integrates open space. And we've been saying throughout the pandemic just how desperately our community needs open space, especially bar backyards, side yards, places for families to come out and play. And the picture of this building is just spectacular. I, I don't think that we could have asked for a better development there. This is awfully high, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get these a little bit higher. Um, we couldn't ask for a better development there. And, and as Gladys and Nadiri said, local development is right here in the community. And we know who we're dealing with. We know who to contact uh, when we need help or assistance or if we have a problem or concern. Um, similarly, I helped a, a, a deaf woman apply to two of TND's properties. And the wait list is so long that she was one of like 3,000 applicants in each of the two developments. And so our community desperately, desperately needs this housing, and I hope that you all will vote positively for this. Thank you. Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who wishes? Yep, go ahead. I'm sorry, did you, did you want to speak? No, the, the woman with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Neville and I live at 40 Eleanor Street and I'm coming here today to speak in favor of TND's um, div uh, proposal. Um, I personally know a lot of the folks not only who work for TND but also um, folks who, who live in TND properties and um, it's such an amazing thing to be able to have affordable, um, <laughs> affordable housing in uh, this community. And I'd like to also underscore what the other folks have said about its proximity to public transportation. Having affordable units 
right near the Silver Line is just so important to our community members, a lot of whom don't have cars, who are commuting into to Boston and other places to do the essential jobs that other people <laughs> aren't willing to do. So um, I really hope that you approve um, this project. And also the open space is extremely important. I'm a very privileged person who is lucky to own my own home, but I don't have any yard space around my home. And being you know, a young mother, or a, a new mother, um, I know how difficult it can be if you don't have any space of your own um, to, to spend with your, your family and your little kids. Um, so I really hope that um, this project goes through because it would be a big benefit to the community. Also, before I leave, I also want to speak in support of Green Roots um, t uh, Teaching Kitchen. I don't know if this is the right time to do that, but I'm not going to be able to stay. Um, it's really going to be a great benefit to the community if the Teaching Kitchen gets approved. Um, the space, where they're right next to the, the urban farm, La Finca, and that's a place where I take my son to, like, like I said, I don't have any, um, I don't have my own yard. I really have to take advantage of public spaces. Um, like the urban farm and having the teaching kitchen there is going to be such an excellent opportunity for the young people of Chelsea to be able to go right from the garden to, to cooking with their own hands in that, that test kitchen. And it's a new place where people are going to be able to congregate. We don't have a lot of coffee shops or places where we can just sit and be, and it's going to be a, a beautiful space. I've seen the plans, and I've been to some of the planning meetings, and it's going to be a great space for people to just get together. We have a real lack of community spaces, including indoor ones in Chelsea. Like the, There's no places for, for the play groups to be held. There's no places like for, for um, certain dance classes to be held. So having a new community space that, that we can use is going to be really great. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Does he want a candy? <laughs> he was good. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else? Ups, there was. Who was? Who was? Up, oh, go ahead. Hi, my name is Greg Zell. Uh, I don't have a Chelsea address. I live in Malden, but I am a counselor here on Broadway. And I have a large portion of Chelsea residents who are my clients. Almost all of them are either inadequately housed or just have no housing at all. A project like this would be a total game changer for most of them. They could have a place to rent and to stay at, which would be amazing. For me, at least as a mental health person, having housing is my first priority. So if I could see my clients or anybody in Chelsea, honestly, get this kind of housing available to them, I think that would be a total step in the right direction for the city, community, and everywhere around it, basically. Thank you. And uh, well, we don't discriminate. You give us your Malden address, please, for the record. Oh, <laughs> sure. It's 51 Myrtle Street. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? Tengan todos muy buenas noches. Mi nombre es Kenny Alfaro, uh, vivo en la 759 de la Broadway. Quiero decirle que sí, por favor. Good evening to all. My name is Kenya Alfaro, and I live at 759 Broadway Street. Si, por favor, pudieran apoyar a este hermoso proyecto para nuestra comunidad. Soy residente de Chelsea desde hace más de 15 años. Vivo muy feliz en mi comunidad. Y no necesito salir afuera de mi comunidad porque he visto algunos espacios abiertos, green room. Este, me gusta el trabajo de ellos. Salgo con mi niña a los programas que ellos ofrecen. Y, y lo de las viviendas sería una, una buena oportunidad para la familia de Chelsea. Les agradeceríamos, por favor, si pudiera votar. I would like to ask you to please support this beautiful project. I'm a Chelsea resident for 15 years. I live very happily in my community. I do not wish to leave my community. Um, I really support this project. I support all the um, programs and green roots offers and all the opportunities and community gatherings. Is she, is she here testifying on green roots or is she here testifying on this development? I'm 
mention Reuse because although they're developing, they support, they work together. So okay. that's why Thank I you. mentioned them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? The city manager, she, you usually get to go first, you know. It's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I won't repeat what most said. They've hit the highlights. I would just say my administration fully supports this project. Affordable housing, in my opinion, is the number one crisis that is facing this community. It's been the case for several years now. This project directly addresses it by providing 60 plus affordable units uh, right adjacent to uh, transit. So it's uh, from the city's perspective, this is an excellent project and I would urge the board to vote in favor of the zoning relief. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else who wishes to speak on it? There being none, I'm going to close the public participation portion of this hearing. Can you go? I have a question. What? I have a question. Sure. Um, is TND considering um, relocate some of the current tenants in other areas to this new project when it's done? Sorry, can you say the is last TND part? Is TND considering um, relocate your, your current tenants from other location to this location when it's done? We would have a lottery, so any of our current residents would be eligible to apply, and if they still uh, qualify, they'd be, they'd, if they were Chelsea residents, they'd qualify for a Chelsea resident's preference, um, but there's no specific, um, there's no preference for them as T&D residents, or, and there's no prohibition against them. But if they apply, what does it mean if one of the, if they, your current residents will apply for these to get into this new building, um, how that works, you know, without, they can stay there where they are and leave this new building for no, new people to apply for get more chance to get in. And, do you um, have a backup lottery? Like if, if people move from one place, yeah. how, do you rep, how do you backfill them? Is that what you're Right, yeah, so, there's, yeah. so when the lottery is over and all of the apartments are filled, then the basically what was the lottery list becomes a waiting list. So for example, the project that's, that's finishing up at 1005 Broadway, we had 1,973 applicants for the 38 apartments. So if somebody were to get an apartment there and then apply for another affordable unit and move out, there'd be 18, 1,900 people sort of behind them on the waiting list. Would I moving. be accurate in saying that if you're adding 66 new units here, 66 new people will, there will be 66 residents here. They may be residents uh, all, all over your portfolio. Additional 66 p families will be there. They may. They may be somewhere now, somewhere else, and coming here. Right. But the then that one will be backfilled by somebody else. Yeah, the vast majority of them won't be TND residents, but mm -hmm. because there'll be a lottery and the chances of anybody, you know, given 1,900 applicants for 38 units, we assume that, you know, any individual person, unfortunately, won't have a great chance to live there. So the majority of them won't be TND residents, but a TND resident is certainly welcome to, a current TND resident is certainly, certainly welcome to apply. And if they were to move into a new apartment, then we'd be able to backfill back that, that with other folks who qualify. Still in that increase home. of 66 exactly. units. Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jill? Um, so one of the speakers said, mentioned about uh, a wait list of 3,000 approximately. And um, these new 66 units, which is wonderful. Um, is by lottery. Yes. So that 3,000 wait list have the opportunity to apply for the lottery. Yeah, it, yes. So their standing on the wait list is irrelevant to the lottery. Yeah, unfor unfortunately, it's sort of regulated through fair housing. So being mm -hmm. that it's a new project, we don't have much of a choice but to go through the lottery. We have always applied to the state for the maximum local preference of 70% and always been successful getting that. So we'll have a preference on 70% of the units, um, again, assuming they approve it, um, uh, for Chelsea residents. Um, so if somebody's on, you know, on the waiting list and they're uh, somewhere else, that doesn't impact where they are in the lottery, but if they're a Chelsea resident, that mm. helps. Okay, and I think you answered my other question in terms of how many units will be allocated to Chelsea residents. In the lottery pool. Yeah, we always have to apply to the state. So our commitment to you is that we'll apply for the maximum allowable, which is 70%. And like I said, we've always, we've always gotten it. So I mm -hmm. don't see why we wouldn't get it this time, but I mean, we'll, we'll do everything we can to get it. Okay. And one last thing, I just want to encourage um, 
you guys did a great job with the um, letting the community know that this is an ongoing lottery and where to go to apply um, for the um, units, uh, apartments across from Walgreens. Yes. So just to remind you that there are many pocket neighborhoods that don't hear this information. So just be, um, you are intentional, but more intentional in reaching those little pocket neighborhoods as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'd, I'd welcome any feedback um, or assistance getting the word out. I mean, I, I think we, I never want to hear somebody say, oh, I wish I had known mm -hmm. and could have entered it. You know, our goal is really to, to get the word out as wide as possible. So. Thank you. Okay, then uh, you're looking for some variances, obviously. So we have to walk through those one by one. Sure. Uh, are you prepared? Let me, let me read them to you and then you respond in turn, okay? Well, may so I ask a question about this? Because I think we responded in the department comments. I don't think that we need a variance for affordable units. I, I agree. Okay. So we're, we're, so it's not the first one and it would be the last five then. So minimum lot size, minimum lot size per unit, maximum building height, minimum side yard setback, and minimum rear yard setback is what you're looking for. So let's go through them, okay? The variance is sought because of soil conditions, shape or topography of such land or structure, and especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. Yeah, there are two major um, unique characteristics about this lot. The first one is it has a trapezoidal shape um, compared to most of the more rectangular lots in the neighborhood. Um, and the second one is there's about a 35 foot change in elevation from the uh, northwest corner on Bellingham to the southeast corner um, where, the, where Cottage Street meets the Chelsea Greenway. So both the topography and the shape of the lot um, is unique um, to this property and, and creates some of the challenges that directly impact the variances we've requested. A literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. Um, a literal enforcement would make the project financially infeasible and would substantially reduce the number of affordable homes and parking spaces that we could provide. Um, and as you know, you've, the board has previously approved a, a similar project and wrote in the absence of relief, the structure cannot be built. And the literal, uh, literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance the petitioner would face hardship to develop the vacant dumping ground for multifamily residential development. Okay. Desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Now this is the easy one. This is the gimme. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. So the, the proposal includes open space adjacent to the Chelsea Greenway, activates Cottage Street and Bellingham Street frontages, um, and greatly exceeds the inclusionary housing it's a good thing. requirements. So mm -hmm. it's a good thing. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't, um, create detriment that creates uh, positive impacts. Okay. Yeah. If we can't answer that one, we shouldn't even be talking. I see about the question. Exactly. Uh, desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. Yeah, we, we believe the purposes are served by granting the required relief and allowing the improvements and investment in the property in the neighborhood while providing needed, needed housing for the Chelsea residents. This was intended, you said that there was an intention for affordable housing in that. Okay, we need the variance requirements. John, does the planning board, uh, the planning department have some thoughts? Uh, planning uh, department has a uh, recommendation for two um, uh, conditions, standard conditions and design review. Uh, the planning department is supportive of this proposal. So do we have a motion on this with the conditions that John articulated, including design review, Joe? Uh, <coughs> case number. 2022-15-178 Cottage Street, the neighborhood development. For a special permit and variance seeking approval of construction of 66 unit apartment building. Uh, we <coughs> make a recommendation may to approve. Make a recommendation uh, and include the conditions set forth by gotcha. the planning department. Hugo? You second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good job. Make a nice make a nice building. Thank you. Thank you. 
The next one, 2022, 295 Eastern Ave, there's been a request to continue this to our November 1st meeting. And again, the meeting is November 1st, not November 8th. I will say that a few more times tonight. And you don't need to say, we'll just continue. Is there a request to continue? Is there a, a motion to grant that? Joan, you, request, you make a recommendation to continue? Yes, I make a recommendation. Second. Joe, yeah, all in favor? Aye. The next one in front of us is 2022-238 Wellesley Street, John Scalaro, for special permit and variances, seeking approval to construct a second story addition, which does not meet the current minimum requirements for side yard setback, front yard setback, and required parking spaces. John, what did the planning department, the planning board have to say about this one? Uh, planning board recommended approval with conditions. Okay. Members of the board, Anthony Rossi uh, here on behalf of the petitioner. Sitting to the left of me is Mrs. Scalaro, who's the owner, the proprietor of the current establishment in the building. Uh, Mrs. Scalaro has operated his business, the masonry business there for, it was his father's original business for over 40 years out of that same small location. Uh, essentially, all he's doing with this uh, structure is he's taking a portion of the footprint, the existing footprint, and adding a second story on a portion of that uh, first floor. So essentially he's taking half of the footprint on the first floor and adding half of that on the second floor. What he's trying to do is move his offices that are currently on the ground level, um, which I believe there's four offices and a bathroom, what have you, in a conference room and bring it up to the second floor. That way he can actually bring vehicles inside the building and have more areas as far as, instead of having trucks that go in and out and their offices there and fumes, he wants something more comfortable for him and his staff to work out of. They're not adding more employees, it's just them. It's just more to give more space for themselves. Um, it's, it's a, the footprint of the building is basically the size of the lot. So it sits on the lot line, from my understanding. So uh, he, he couldn't build, as far as the variance is concerned, within the setbacks because there would be no, Sorry, it's off. <laughs> there would be no, no nothing to do. Um, we did have an opportunity to speak to neighbors and the butters and uh, they're all in, um, support of it when we spoke to them um, on it because they understand what's what's what he's trying to do and transpire. He's gonna brick up the buildings, is, the front of the building is all brick and he's gonna mirror that same look. And I know the planning department had some recommendations regarding signage and lighting and whatever this board and the planning part conditions are, they certainly would uh, um, adopt um, those requests and so forth. Okay, Thank do you. we have any questions of him before I open it to the public? Yeah, was the hours or um was the hours you worked? Was your schedule for um, that? For the I'm sorry. Was the hours? Was the schedule? Forty-seven Wellesley. No, no, no. no, no the, the, hours the, hours the hours of operation. The hours of operation. How far is it from the hours, the hours of hours operation? operation. We we open the doors at six in the morning, tuck sleeve, and then it's just office people from seven thirty to basically six o'clock at night. Every day. Monday. Every day. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday and so Saturday is only a skeleton crew for truck drivers. Or Sunday's closed. Closed. Correct. Any other questions? And then this is the public partition. The public portion is still open. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this matter? There being none, I'm going to close the public participation portion of the hearing. Um, John, well, first of all, let's go through the variance issues. Okay. Yep. We need variances for what, John? Remind me. Looking at my report. Uh, the report. I believe it was a side yard setback. You're right. Uh, expansion of an existing non-conformity uh, and expand, uh, to ex basically expansion yard. of an existing non-conformity, so, uh, front yard and side yard setback. Okay, I mean, okay, the variance, let's go through each one, as you know. The variance is sought because of soil condition, shape or topography of such land or structure, and especially effect affecting such land or structure, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. Correct, and it's, it, if I may, the, it's gonna be the same response for the both side yard and front yard setbacks. Yes, yeah, sorry. Th due to the zoning, the topography, the, the, the lot size itself is built on lot lines, and it would not meet today's current zoning. So the expansion of nonconformity wouldn't alter what's in the, the district because it's actually, it's not expanding it, it's only going up vertical for a portion of it. It's not going over the footprint of what's existing, so it wouldn't be detrimental since it's only staying in the same footprint of the building. Okay. 
The literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would involve a substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. Correct. So if we built within the side yard setback, the financial hardship is that you couldn't actually build it because it would be it would be a one It'd be about this big. Exactly. It'd be like a two inch <laughs> building. So he has no he has no choice but to build it in in that footprint because it would never comply with current zoning today. Bill? Desire, desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. It wouldn't be detrimental because it's actually not expanding the current existing side yard and front yard setback. It's only going up from it. So it's not creating a, 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 an expansion on it. It's not going up three stories. It's still within the height requirement. So it's only staying with the same footprint and the same existing nonconformity. Okay. And then it's taking vehicles off the road, uh, parked vehicles okay, off the road. Yeah. So okay. that, that's it, Bobby. And last but never least, desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of this chapter. Correct. So the zoning, every one stands on its own. As far as this is concerned, it wouldn't be detrimental or expand from what the zoning is because this property, even though it's located in that district, it's almost in a business district because you have a, it's near the highway and so forth. So it wouldn't be changing the use because it's not a residential structure. It's a commercial non-conforming pre- It's pretty neutral, is what you're correct. saying. Correct. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything different to it because there's nothing, that use wouldn't be even allowed in the district. Yeah, and so you're not adding trucks, you're not adding anything. We're not adding anything to it. Oh, okay, you need other requirements. Um, do we have a motion on that? John, you already told me. No, what, what are your planning? I'm sorry. Um, I'm recommending conditions, standard conditions, design review, a signage plan, an exterior, exterior lighting plan, and all uh, vehicles park in uh, the building overnight, or as many as they can fit in. Are you comfortable with those require those mandates? Yes. If you are, then do we have a motion to approve a motion based on the requirements that John just articulated? Joan? I make a motion to approve 2022-23-8 um, Wesley Street um, for special permit and variances seeking approval to construct a second story addition with standing conditions. And, our, and the others are as articulated by John. And the others as articulated by John. Second. Here, second, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Have a good evening. Thanks, John. I'm going to go, I'm going to, there's a couple of them that we are going to vote to continue, so I'm going to take those just in case people are here to speak to those. I, you, yeah, you're fine. I can go for the yeah. next one. You're Park, I have Parkway, so continue. What, uh, what, what Revere Beach? We're getting, yes. No, we're going to re continue that. Continue, okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, John, you did get the, the, the waivers of second time. I did, thank you. Thank you. So you, you do have the vote to continue them. We're going to vote to continue, but I mean, we'll do that, yeah. I assume. Yeah. 2022, 27, 168, 170, 172, Maverick. Street, Peter M. Tufts, we have a request to continue that to November 1st meeting. Do I have a vote? John, uh, Arthur votes yes. Joan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we've had the same request on 2022, 28, 320, River Beach Parkway, GVLP, Corporation, DBA, Vita Verde, vote to continue to 11. Arthur, Joe, all in favor? Okay. Now let's move on to the other one. Now, the next one is 2022-2570 Fremont Ave Avenue, Adam Vagno, for special permit seeking approval for a driveway which does not meet the City of Chelsea zoning ordinance, which states that parking of a vehicle is not permitted within five feet of a side lot line, nor within five feet of a wall containing windows. This is the first time we're going to be hearing this, so we won't be deciding it today. It will go instead to the Planning Board on 1025. And then back here on 11-1, again, not 11-8, 11-1. We'll be back here in three weeks rather than in four weeks. So could you please identify yourself, make sure you speak into the microphone, either one, whichever one you're comfortable with, and uh, just speak into the microphone and introduce yourself and present us with your project, please. Good evening, everybody. My name is Adam Vagno. I reside at 70 Fremont Avenue. And my project is uh, to put a carport underneath my existing deck and porch. I'm trying to bring up the plans. So I presented a letter basically stating uh, that it's uh, utilizing an existing area that's underutilized right now. It's not encroaching on any of my existing uh, green space. 
uh, it takes a car off the street. There's no parking on that side of uh, Franklin. I, I'm on the corner of Fremont and Franklin. And uh, for me, it, uh, it's a little more safety if I have my car. I had some uh, ice fall off my roof a couple years ago and totaled my car on, <laughs> on the drive from the driveway that I have on the side of the house. So I said, well, might be a good idea if I could utilize this space underneath the deck and, uh, and the porch. So it's going underneath your, and it, you're going to, it, what's there now? Uh, dirt. Just dirt, so you're going to pave it? I'm sorry? Are you planning to pave it? Yep. Yes, it's going to be a uh, retaining wall because it's on a hill, and it's going to be cement poured mm -hmm. with okay. a drain at the bottom of it to drain out. Okay. Is, it's is about six feet in from the s actual sidewalk. Mm -hmm. would begin the beginning of the uh, enclosure would be. But you've got to go over, do you, do you already have a curb cut there, John? No. So you'd be getting, a, have to apply for a curb cut? I did apply for a curb okay. cut, yep. Okay. Is it a single house or? Multiple? Single family, yep. Do you have an existing uh, driveway now? Is the house have an existing driveway? I have a driveway on the, uh, if you're facing the house, the right side. Uh, so it's just for one car. And my son and my granddaughter moved in with me, and uh, so they have a vehicle too, and uh, I thought it might be helpful to uh, keep another car off the street. It's always a battle uh, to park a car at night. Uh, to, even with the uh, permits that you're allowed, you know, it seems like there seems to be a lot of problem with parking, and especially with uh, snow removal, and it's just, for me, it was a better utilization of some area that is not being used anyway. Uh, and it's extremely high off the deck. It's about almost 14 feet uh, when it's all dug out because it's so high because I'm on a hill. Uh, so I thought it might be a good idea to use that. And again, to reiterate that nobody parks on that side of the street anyway, so I'm not taking away from any potential parking that would be on that side of the street. And my next door neighbor actually at 63 Harvard Street was granted a, uh, a parking area as well. Uh, so we've been conversing back and forth and this is a project I've been debating for several years to do. I moved to uh, Chelsea in 2012. I bought the house in 2012. And so I've been there 10 years now and uh, I'm just trying to update the house and utilize the property to its potential. And that's about it I have okay. right now. Any other questions? This is two dr two drive uh, two car garage um, driveway. Well, the proposal will be just for one. It's only good for one vehicle oh, for one. to be you know covered. It's going to be a carport. It's going to be open on three ends. You know. Uh, uh, you, you know what are you going to do with the tree? The tree. The tree in front of the driveway. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to move it. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> is that a city tree or is it your tree? City tree. And you will be responsible for paying for moving it. Question on that tree. Uh, when your neighbor got his permit uh, to put the driveway, there was a tree in front of his house. Yes. That tree was moved. Yes. Is that the tree that's now in front of the dr your driveway? No. Okay. But you're going to be, you're responsible for the tree street, for moving the street, I mean, for replacing the street tree. Is that correct, John? Or moving, it depending on the uh, status of the tree. You'd, you'd have to work with you'd have to work with the planning department uh, to figure out the appropriate distribute uh, whatever what happens to the tree. I understand. Yeah, it was funny because I've been thinking about this project for several years, and when they were putting trees in, it's like, oh, please don't put it there. I said because I'm thinking on putting a driveway there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> so again, we won't. This will. This will be the first opportunity when we'll have to speak on this. It will not be the only opportunity since they'll be back here. He'll, he'll be back here on the 1st of November. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? Okay, there being none, I'm going to not close the public portion of this. We will be back on November 1st. So you go to the planning board on mm -hmm. the ten, on the 25th and back here on the 1st, okay? On the 1st, yep. yep. Just one more question. Yep, go ahead. Uh, sure. Does he going to need lighting for the driveway, John? Is there any lighting? Uh, for uh, ca underneath the carport area, I, so I thought the driveway. So is that tree have a? I'm sorry, that street has a public uh, lighting. That street has uh, highway city lighting uh, since they changed all the street lights to highway style. <laughs> it's it's certainly not dark. But you but the only light that you would have would be your own personal light that's not glaring underneath the carport. Yeah, I, I am going to utilize and put like a, a light under there, you know, if needed, probably a motion activated light. I, I'm not sure exactly yet. 
but with the street city lighting, boy, you, you don't have to have any issue, <laughs> for sure. Okay, we'll see you back here on the 25th. I mean, well, planning board will see you on the 25th, and we'll see you on the 1st. Very well. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. The next case in front of us is 2022-26, 70 Prescott Avenue, Aaron Griffin. And it sounds very similar to the one we just heard. For a special permit seeking approval for a driveway, which does not meet the City of Chelsea zoning ordinance, which states that parking of a vehicle is not permitted within five feet of the side lot line, nor within five feet of a wall containing windows. Could you please introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Erin Griffin. I reside at 70 Prescott Ave. And what is it that you want to do? Um, so we're looking to lower the existing driveway because we don't get much use out of it. And it's actually quite dangerous in the winter um, to try to get up. Um, and then in addition, add uh, one spot next to that once it's lowered down to allow for two parking spots. Um, so show us, so you're saying, so it's a, it's a Sure, what? so yeah. this right now, the What, you gotta take, you gotta, you gotta oh, use Oh, I'm the, sorry. Um, so this is the existing parking lot and you can see it's quite steep. Um, and so we don't actually get use out of it um, and we prefer not to park at the bottom because the, bar the barrels uh, tend, have the uh, ability to fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, so we were hoping to lower this down and then on this side to kind of take. I don't understand, lower what down? I'm not sorry. The start. driveway. Because the driveway is actually really steep. You mean you're going to dig it out or is that? To just flatten it, to oh, okay. get it so, so we can actually get a car in because oh, currently okay. it's not. Uh, and are you going to put a wall there or something? Is so the, the back wall, sorry, the back wall will uh, be maintained. It would just have to lower down and they'd have to, I guess, stabilize, make sure that it's, it's sound. Um, but as far back as this part right here, which is the very end when you pull in, um, is where we'd want to kind of cut over and allow for an additional parking spot next to that for one for each unit, essentially. Um, and the reason Show me again where you want to add the parking spot. Sure, to the left over here. Um, so you, are you going to take down that with that wall? Yeah, and so that's, this right here was done not too, too long ago, but if uh, there's another picture that actually shows the front wall is coming down. Um, so we're planning to do, yeah, so you can really see it right there. Mm -hmm. It's falling over, um, so we do have to get it done anyway, and that's kind of what's prompted this. We figured if we're going to put the money into fixing the wall, we'd like to lower the existing space and try to add space next to it for a double and, so, and then you would move the wall over is what you're exactly, saying. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Okay. And again, we're not going to be deciding this today anyway, so just, you know, just so you know, you have to come on the 25th to the planning board back here on November 1st. Sure. I'm sorry, you go. Yeah, she's going to need a clerk cut right for that. Right, How far are you going from the mailbox? How um, far are you only going from? Only as much as the existing park, so not the full length, but just enough to fit one more car. So I imagine if that one's so 15, maybe another 15 um, mm -hmm. next to that. So it would just be space for each of the cars. What's the standard width for a car, John? Uh, well, standard width for a parking space is uh, nine feet wide. Oh, I was just basing it off of how wide yeah. the existing driveway is, mm -hmm. so. Well, I mean, I think that's, that's something that we want, you know, do you want that much of your yard? If the standard space is nine. Yeah, well, the, dry, the DPW is going to decide how wide your curb cut can be because they don't uh, promote wide, extra wide curb cuts, so they may just minimize it to whatever could fit two cars. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Is there anyone here who wishes to speak on this? Okay, there's, I'm gonna keep hoping the public participation portion back here. Planning board, 1025. Zoning board, back here on November 1st. Okay, all right, thank, thank you, you guys. And you were very good. It was very good. <laughs> We already did Revere Beach. So our last one of the day is 2022-29, 59 Pearl Street, Roseanne, Bon Giovanni, Green Roots. And again, this is the first time we'll be hearing this, so we will not be deciding it today. This is a special permit to permit a teaching kitchen in the Waterfront Upland District. Can you give me back the back? Of course. Just as long as you speak into the microphone. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't think I need a microphone. Um, good evening. Uh, I'm Roseanne Bon Giovanni. I'm the executive director of Green Roots, and I'm joined here this evening by Christopher Weaver from Landing Studio. And we are in front of you to talk about our teaching kitchen that is proposed for 59 Pearl Street. 
the teaching kitchen came about. Uh, it was envisioned several years ago, uh, close to six years ago, by members of the Chelsea Community Garden Association who were looking for a place to gather indoors for their harvest events, to use bathrooms, to you know, uh, cook together, to share recipes, to share culture, to share community. They came up, came up with designs and visions for the space, um, but it never came to be because we didn't have the funding to move forward with it. Last year around this time, we were approached by Massachusetts General Brigham. They had some remaining funding that they were trying to uh, allocate out through grants through a number of different programs before the end of the fiscal year. And they said, are you interested in a teaching kitchen or are you, have you thought about a teaching kitchen to augment your community growing spaces? And we said, we have, we've called it a garden center, but we can call it a teaching kitchen <laughs> if you give us a grant. Um, and so we were really, we were excited. They gave us uh, close to a million dollars over three years to help build the teaching kitchen. It sits right next to or adjacent to our urban farm. So Green Roots oversees uh, five, maybe six now community growing spaces. Um, we have a garden that's focused just on young people, a garden that's uh, focused on folks who live in public housing, um, and a number of other community gardens that are open to everybody in the community, as well as an urban farm. The urban farm was created in 2020, uh, the, the summer, the fall of 2019, and so that was really integral during COVID to help grow and harvest uh, locally grown produce that was then provided to a pop-up food pantry in Chelsea. That continues to be the case where we're growing high volume uh, food at the urban farm and sharing it out with the community and also helping to support local pop-up pantries um, to provide that he healthy local um, foods. The kitchen would be directly adjacent to that growing space and the Chelsea Community Garden, so it's an amazing opportunity to bring those two growing spaces together into a building uh, to extend the sort of growing season, if you will. We can grow, um, we can bring in uh, a additional food and teach throughout the winter season, um, and the goal is to continue to build the urban farming and urban gardening program throughout the whole city, um, you know, and, and beyond the you know, the, the warmer months, you know, thinking through um, the winter months. And so this is a really exciting project. We have a number of community members who have been involved in the community visioning and design um, stage for this uh, kitchen. And Chris has a um, presentation that he's gonna walk through. Yeah, so we prepared a few slides so to help. introduce yourself, please? Oh, I'm Christopher Weaver. I work at the architecture firm Landing Studio. Um, okay. And so we've prepared some slides that give an overview of what the project will be and where it's at. Um, if you move to the next one. So like Roseanne mentioned, it's really close to the, the urban farm in the Chelsea Community Garden. It's in this one story portion of, of a warehouse complex that's at the intersections of Marginal and Pearl Street, as highlighted there. Um, so the, you see here the, the one story portion itself is at the, the part of the warehouse that is up against Miller Street, which is this back side road between the future teaching kitchen and where the urban farm is. Um, the, the project will be renovating the exteriors of the, the warehouse building at the area where the kitchen is. Um, the interior of it right now is it's gutted. It, um, it has, it's a, it used to historically be a stable, I think, for the, the factory that had been adjacent in this warehouse in the early 20th century. And so we're gonna preserve some of the existing wooden structure that's there. Um, we can move on. So the layout of the new space will be predominantly the main kitchen space where the, the classes will be taught with a couple of bathrooms and office in the back and the supporting storage and maintenance spaces that are needed. And all of the, the entrances will be towards Miller Street, towards the area where the, the community farm is. So this is uh, an image representing what the interior would look like, the parts of the existing wooden structure that we're preserving, um, opening up the street facade to get a lot of the natural light in with new windows. And then this is an image representing what we're thinking the exterior would be like. Again, opening it up towards Miller Street to help to make that connection between the two. And uh, this is representing the, the general area and how we would be meeting the required parking for, for the use type. How many cooking stations are you going to have? 
So there's, it's set up like a domestic kitchen. The idea of these cooking classes that we've heard is to make them feel like something that's more familiar to what residents could have at home. So there's really just all the appliances of a single domestic kitchen. So but, it's, but it's, it's just one island itself, where it's one island where a you know a chef or a teacher could cook at, and there'll be audiovisual so that the rest of the group can see. And if we wanted to go virtual, we could. And then there'll be smaller stations like this where folks can do individual sort of cutting and mixing, but there'll there'll only be one area with a stove, an okay. oven, a refrigerator, okay. a sink. So all of this, if I could, all of this open area here in this storage will be these movable tables that we could pull out depending on the size of, of, of the classroom. And so they'll roughly be a little bit bigger than this, and so they could be individualized, but then they could also be pu pushed together to make one long dining table. But there's only going to be one area where there's actual heat being applied to food. I'm uh, yes, yeah, uh, the yes okay. right over okay. there on that. Okay. that way. Yes? With regards to parking, most of the people I assume will be walking to the facility. How many spaces will you actually have available? So we're showing six. Six dedicated spaces that we could use for the teaching kitchen, but as you said, most folks will walk. It's right on the public transportation line. And close to the garden. Right, yeah. yes. And there's, yeah. And, and I, I'm just going to, I assume this goes without saying, but this is not a place where you'll be selling food from. No. This is no. clearly a teaching kitchen. Correct, yes. And who'll be doing the teaching? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be doing the learning. <laughs> no, but will it be from professionals? Will it be lo yes. like. Uh, so I think a little bit of both. And so what we want to do is we, part of the grant and the requirement from Mass General Brigham is to hire a nutritionist or dietitian. And the goal is really to reduce chronic disease. So to help folks to learn how to make what they might make in their own kitchens, but make it healthier, substitute out a high trans fat product for something that's healthier. Um, and so we'll hire chefs that will actually teach the classes, but then we also want to have the space be open to other community members. So. For example, the library said that they might like to have an event there. So if the library wants to come and make a salad together or that, that you know, something that doesn't require a chef, they'll be able to use the space as well. And we'll have, so I think know. that's actually something as, as we think about approving this, that we're clear about what it's used for. Because if you use this for also a community gathering space yep. where food may be applied, I mean, I think we'd want to know that so that's not teaching so much as it's a gathering space. Right. And, the, the goal will definitely be, the priority is to teach folks, mm -hmm. um, but we do want the space to be used for community members. So we want it, I, I want that space to not be just seen as a Greenwoods teaching kitchen, but if Healthy Chelsea wants to use it, if the library wants to use it, if the senior center wants to have a gathering there and you know, maybe they're cooking uh, you know, biscotti or something, um, but we would coordinate it with our staff and a nutritionist and, and uh, chef. So if there needed to be a chef on site at all times, the chef would be there when there's any cooking. If the library wanted to have a reading hour with some coffee, maybe we wouldn't have the chef on site. Maybe we would just have the garden coordinator. And so Who that's manage, who's going that. to manage the site? Our community garden, our, sorry, our food coordinator, our food justice coordinator. So you'll have somebody who's responsible for yes. making sure that it's properly cleaned. Absolutely, and locked up. Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to open this up to the public. Again, this won't be the only opportunity that you'll have to speak on it because you're going to be back here at the planning board on 25th, back here on the 1st. I will say that over and over again just to be sure. Please, sir, come on up. Give your name and address, please, and, um, and tell us what you think. Hi. Uh, my name is Dr. Thomas Curtin, 24 Breakwater Drive. I'm with the uh, Chelsea Community Gardens, who's the abutting organization. Um, to, the, to their gardens, and we just want to give our unqualified support. Thank you very much. Sir? Uh, hello, my name is Oscar, as in Oscar de Grouch. <laughs> I've lived in Chelsea my whole life, in about 21 years. I live on 69 Pearl, so it's actually right next to it. I live basically right in front of the garden. It's like my backyard, essentially, at this point. <laughs> um, my little brother loves going there all the time. They hosted wonderful events that they not only hosted, such as like small cooking classes, but also arts, 
as well as how to plant and like and grow veggies there. It's wonderful. Honestly, if you guys haven't gone there, you should definitely like try it out. It's really wonderful there. But um, I'm also here for the kitchen because like I said, I live right next to it. That area can become pretty dangerous at night. My mother's car has been broken into a couple of times while being there. I've seen people come and go to like pee or even do feces or even just like, you know, just do drug sales or any like other stuff where sometimes people just don't feel comfortable at night going through there. And it's like abandoned building there. It's like if we open this, not only will we be helping back to the community, but we will also essentially not like prevent these types of things from happening, but make people think twice about it. Be like, oh wait, there's lights here, there's cameras and there's people here. Maybe I shouldn't just go here when I'm drunk or when I'm over here trying to like take a piss. It's really unsatisfying to live there, honestly. Another thing, it's like, if we're going in and out of Chelsea between East Boston, the first thing we'll see is a abandoned building. You know, it's not, it's not really nice to be living in Chelsea throughout my whole life, being known to be someone that's like from like a folky city. Although I'm not sure if how your experience is, but that's my experience. Talking to people from like Boston or any other places, they, they usually have like negative connotations with Chelsea. So this would definitely improve that. Another thing, I'm sorry if it gets a little personal, but I ended up getting this disease called fatty liver disease. A thing about I learned from just like Ubering, getting fast food, things I'm seeing with my friends and other people who are younger than me are like, you know, they're just getting accustomed to these things. They're not like finding it in themselves to cook because they have these like fast food easy markings to just go to. And because of this, I ended up developing this disease and I think honestly, this will help people to not only learn, but to be motivated to actually start cooking because of this. And if I don't fix these things by like actually cooking and I was forced to change my diet, then it, it will end up cutting my life within like three years from now. Hopefully it doesn't happen. And I'm hoping that this can honestly inspire more the youth to go out, cook, buy things, try out the gardens, free vegetables. It's honestly, it's mind blowing. I didn't even think this was a thing. I thought maybe I would need like an EBT. No, I, I don't. I could just go there. And I'm a full time student. So it's like money's hard for me. And like going to this garden, it helped me quite a bit with these vegetables that I never tried before. And it was just a spectacular experience work, like going to these places and like meeting these people. And like, I believe this is a great opportunity. I know you said um, it won't be decided, but please, please like really do think about this. Because it, it may not be your children or anyone that may affect you directly, but it is the people of Chelsea, the youth. I would like to represent the youth of Chelsea that, you know, depending on fast food isn't good. This kitchen would definitely help people to just get off their asses and start cooking. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's wonderful. So please consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think you got a customer here. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone else who wishes to speak on it? Sure, come on up. Oops, wait a minute. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, you're coming with her. Sorry. <laughs> while, while they're setting up, I just want to remind the board, you have you received four letters of support oh. as well. Okay, gorgeous. From Linda Munitz and Rob Caro, from Eli Eliza Buenas Daniel. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Tiburcia Ramirez. One moment, please. One moment. Sarah Jackson and uh, Ron Fishman. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, can you name an address, please? Okay. Eh, mi nombre es Tiburcia Ramirez. Eh, vivo en la 150 de la Shirley. Y estoy apoyando a Green Roof porque esta cocina es muy interesante porque okay. nuestro... Okay. Hi, my name is Tiburcia Ramirez and I live at 150 Chartlet Street. Okay. Y estoy apoyando por a nuestras personas que están por la cocina que es muy importante por nuestros jóvenes porque hay muchos jóvenes que necesitan tener esa experiencia, gracias a Dios que nosotros ya tenemos experiencia de cocinar, pero queremos más experiencia saludablemente y también enseñar a los jóvenes. I'm in support of Green Roots and the Teaching Kitchen, especially for the youth. Thank God I already have experience um, cooking, but I want the youth to be able to learn and to have experience with cooking. Nuestros jóvenes necesitan tener Eh, experiencia en la cocina, comer saludables y esto es muy importante porque es un proyecto muy bueno para que ellos aprenden comer saludable y tener ellos ese, ese lugar donde cocinar, 
cómo ellos pueden tener experiencia para tener su propia comida. I think it's very important for the youth to have the experience in the kitchen, also to learn how to eat healthy food, to be able to experience this. Y la finca es un jardín muy bonito porque ahí he, he obtenido yo plantas, vegetales, zanahoria y cebolla, chile, toda clase que a mí me ha servido en mi cocina y he comido saludablemente en estos tiempos que que está abierto la finca. And also I've been able to um, get great benefits from the garden. I've been able to get plants, um, flowers, vegetables, all kind of vegetables that I use in my kitchen that have been useful for me. Por favor, les suplico a ustedes que apoyen a la cocina que se abre para que todos la comunidad podemos nosotros estar allí y aprender más comer saludable. And I implore that you please um, approve this project so that it can benefit the community and that we can learn and learn how to cook healthy. Yo les agradezco mucho y gracias por escucharme y gracias a ellos también que están haciendo un proyecto muy bueno para la comunidad. Thank you very much for listening to me and thank you um, for this project for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? Come on up. Um, Paula Garrity also texted while I was here saying that she was going to email you a letter as well. I'm sorry, I couldn't. Paula Garrity is going to be emailing you a letter. Okay. Yo también apoyo, al, mi nombre es Kenny Alfaro, vivo en la comunidad de Chelsea, en 759 Broadway en Chelsea. Yo también apoyo este proyecto, eh, considero que para el desarrollo este, de, de la comunidad de Chelsea, en nueva experiencia para aprender este, con nuestros hijos, a enseñarles a, a comer, seguir comiendo sanamente. Eh, gracias a, a la finca, estoy fortaleciendo mi vitamina este, C en mi cuerpo. Eh, mi, mis hijas les encanta mucho cocinar, y me gustaría este, este espacio para yo poder seguir yendo con mis hijas. <laughs> okay, my name is Kenya Alfaro at 159 Broadway Street, and I also support this project. Um, it's been an incredible experience for my children. Um, they've learned how to eat healthy. Thanks to the community garden, I'm getting all my vitamin C. My daughters really enjoy going to the garden and they enjoy cooking. Mis hijas, una de mis hijas está conmigo, es testigo. Ella le encanta mucho este, uh, tocar su, los vegetales, le gusta mucho hacer nuevas, diferentes uh, cosas con los vegetales. Y este, me gustaría que mi hija aprenda nuevas recetas en la comunidad, tanto como de otros países, como este país, como seguir aprendiendo de nuestra, también de nuestra cultura. I have one of my daughters with me here. Um, she loves to cook. Um, she loves to learn new recipes. I want her to learn from different cultures, not only my culture, but I want her to learn how to cook things from here, from other countries. Gracias por escucharme. Thank you for listening. She was so good, I didn't even know she was here. Bring her some candy. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this? I'm Victor Tiernan. Um, I live at 59 Eleanor Street. Um, I'm also employed by the city, but I'm here as a member of Green Roos and as a resident of Chelsea. And I encourage you to approve this teaching kitchen. Um, as a former food service professional, I know the value of um, bringing community together around food and teaching people to, um, to teach, to, sorry, to cook healthy food for themselves and um, and to um, bring people together. So I support this project and I encourage you to. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not. I have some questions. John, no, good. Um, I think you answered the first question, is the purpose of the main hall. 
Uh, your plans show a drain going into the storm deck infiltration system from the first floor. What is that? A drain from the first floor into the storm deck. Into a, into a storm drain? But coming from the interior of the building? Can you say it a little bit more loudly, John? Pardon? Could you where, say it a little bit more loudly? Oh, I'm sorry. Where are you seeing this? Is this it, was in the, it was in your petition plans. Right. The civil drawing? Yes. Yeah. So there is the, 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 there's a, the drain, you're saying, the one that goes into the, um, you don't have that. The one that goes into the, yeah, the storm it. tech. So that is supposed to be for the the downspout for the gutter. The, the roof civil drain. Engineer just roof the drain. Roof okay. Drain. The okay. civil engineer, the line okay. position is. Um, let me find out. Um, trash. Where where is trash to be stored? Now I can't believe you didn't ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. It took you. It took your question. <laughs> uh, uh, do you mean on like in the building? Yes. It'll be stored inside. I'm sorry. I'm looking at plans there, that don't even make sense to me. There will be um, like on, in the building trash storage integrated okay. into the cabinet. Okay. And last one, and you don't have to do it tonight, but uh, can you give me the details of all exterior signage? We can do that. Uh, okay. So one, one of the signs that we're thinking about, not thinking, we're hoping to integrate is actually a mosaic sign. So we have a grant with the Mass Cultural Council to do a mosaic sign. And so we wanted to um, integrate the mosaic sign as part of the, if you could go back to the exterior photo, I'll show you. Um, it'll be a, a welcome sign with ex, uh, mosaic sort of squares and it will be right here. the mm -hmm. roof facing Pearl Street. I don't know the consistency of that sign, but we were thinking about having mm -hmm. a, we were, a we sign had right a, there. We had a sign at the top, but I, we were thinking about changing it because of the visibility through trees. So, okay. But okay, at, at some point I'm gonna need a, a plan showing sure. the signage. Okay. That's it, thank you. Okay, next please. I saw from Sarah's note that you're working with her on the community cookbook. Yes. I've been dying for it. When is it coming out? <laughs> Hopefully before Thanksgiving. Nice. Yeah. I contributed. Can I, I want to see. You did? Sure. Um, so for the food, is it provided? Are residents bringing their food in with them? So right now we're thinking that we're having it provided. So a lot of it will be from the urban farm when it's in growing season. But we've also applied for another grant from the state with the, that would help us to bring in additional fresh fruit food. Uh, fruits and vegetables, but also additional food from like local farms that we could use to cook there. So we'll have some dry products. We'll have fresh fruit and you know vegetables. Um, we're not thinking that folks are going to bring their own food in, unless it's right from the farm. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's a Hello Fresh impression, right? Yeah. So yeah. people are actually there to get the hands-on experience. And also, it's important, I think, for the community to actually, um, the continuity from the community garden to urban garden into the kitchen, um, and just, again, being there to promote healthy living through um, environmental now through um, consumption. So it definitely flows, definitely a benefit for our community. So I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Next, 25th, 25th and the first. And, the first. Yes. and again, not the eighth, the first. Thank you. Do we have Thank a you motion? So much. And we John, do we it. have any other business? Okay. Do we have any other business? No. Then yes, Hugo just made a motion to adjourn. It was just okay. seconded by Joe and we're all in favor. And Ricky, you can go home. <laughs>